Okay, my first guest is the former Republican governor from Ohio who spoke on the first night of the Democratic National Convention this week and endorsed Joe Biden for president, our friend John Kasich. Governor, uh, I know they say politics makes strange bedfellows. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams that you would be at a Democratic convention opening for Bernie Sanders? Well, it seems a, a little bit, uh, you know, kind of out of the ordinary, Bill. But, you know, my whole career, I've had great relations with people in the other party. One of them uh, is a guy named Ron Dellum. So you might recall he was a very liberal Democrat. He was a congressman. He was the mayor of Oakland. And he and I became very, very close. And, you know, I did things with actually with Ralph Nader on corporate welfare, with Tim Penny on balancing the budgets. So, you know, this is not uh, even though it's, it's I would have never kind of imagined this. It's not that I'm uncomfortable seeing people in the other party as somebody that I can work with and, and help in some ways. But speaking at a Democratic convention, obviously, uh, <laughs> it's something out of the yeah, ordinary. Yeah, that's a lot yes. bigger. Uh, obviously it's a lot bigger, but, it, but, but yeah, but I got to tell you, at the time, with some of the things I did with Dellums, which was the limit the production of the B-2 bomber, I mean, I was actually in a meeting with Republican leadership, and a guy there accused me of being a traitor. I mean... Those were big things. I mean, that was that was big time when you start taking on major weapon systems, and we limited the production of it. But this is big time, you know, to be at the convention. But and when they asked me to do it, I had searched my conscience, as you would expect, and and I I, I thought about it, and I thought this is the right thing to do. Uh, and I hope you kind of felt as though it was a classy talk, as I you know I. I tried to talk about what's important in our country. Yeah, it was got good reviews, and it should have. Uh... But I'm just saying this is endorsing, telling people to vote for the person who is not in your party. Let me ask you this a little bit tougher question. Would you have done it if you were still in office? Because I see a lot of Republicans doing this. Colin Powell spoke there and a number of others, yeah. Susan Molinari, um, um, Meg Whitman, um, all retired. Uh, and you don't see it a lot from Republicans in office. In fact, the only, Justin that's a good, Amish that's a good was the question. only that's one. A good question. Uh, yeah, but you can rem you can remember that I expanded Medicaid, right? Uh, it was very controversial at the time. Yeah, uh, I was the only major Republican governor in the country that did that, and I was heading into uh, to reelection, and I went ahead and and did it, you know, because I thought it was the right thing to do. And not only did I hide from it, I went out and explained to people why I was doing it. So. You know, Bill, life is so short. Uh, you know, it's just so short. And when you feel really compelled and it's a matter of conscience, you got to do what you have to do. And uh, but I can't project back. I can just give you an example of what I did that went against the grain. And um, and I'm comfortable with what I've done. And, and let me tell you this. I get a lot of heat for this, too. Uh, I get praise and heat all at the same time. And I knew it would come. That's life. Yeah. And now that you want <clears throat> people to go out, especially in Ohio, which is close this year, <clears throat> very close. You want people to go out and pull the lever for the Democrat. Do you have any regrets about some of the things you did maybe when you were governor that really served to suppress the votes of Democratic voters, the use it or lose it law, which you pushed through, which says if you haven't voted in two elections in a row, they take you off the rolls, uh, cutting down on early voting. I mean, some of that stuff is what... Democrats are always re accusing Republicans of doing, which is the only saying the only way you can win elections yeah. is basically by cutting down the number of people voting. Well, Bill, first of all, we have we have more early days of voting. It's easier to vote in Ohio than about any other state. And, uh, and secondly, that whole eat, you know, use it or lose it was something I, I didn't pass that. That was something that was in effect. But one of the things that I did do was tell the legislature that I was not going to go along with the idea that people had to have a driver's license ID because I felt that that would be that would be very unfair and it would hurt people. So uh, I'm satisfied with with what I had to do. And in terms of uh, in terms of that uh, that that early voting again, I think we have like 29 days of early voting. Uh, it's more than what they have in New York. So maybe people ought to catch up to us rather than we worrying about, you know, how many days we have. We've done a good job here with that. Okay. Well, listen, I'm going <clears> to <throat> read you what the president said yesterday, <laughs> which uh, I hate to keep being an I told you so on this show, but uh, Donald Trump said the only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. 
which is basically saying, heads I win, tails you lose. And then they asked Kelly McEnany about it, and she said, yeah, you know, they're in the we'll see what happens mode, which is, of course, not the answer you want to hear from a president about will you accept the results of the election. Donald Trump also said, we're going to win four more years, and after that we'll go for another four. <laughs> because they spied on my campaign, we should get a redo of four years. I mean, he's doing my act for me, this guy. Um, I still think people are not taking this as seriously as they should. What do you say, and what should we do? Yeah. Bill, my concern is this. So you, you have a, a guy out here already setting it up, saying, well, you know, I think there's, we're going to be ripped off unless I win. And the problem with it, the deep problem with it, is if you get like 20 or 25 percent of the people in this country that don't believe in the legitimacy of a presidential election, you, got a, you have a real, real problem. And that's when I first heard him talking about it, that's when through, what, what went through my mind. You can't have a situation where the, the president of, of the United States, and, and just think about it, there's precedence for this. You remember Richard Nixon felt that things had not gone the right way when he ran against Kennedy. He thought he had grounds of protest. He didn't do it. Al Gore, you know, I know Al very well. Al, you know, Al was able to concede. He said, look, for the good of the country, I'm not going to fight this. So we have Republicans and Democrats who have, have put the country first. And what you see with these comments, to me, uh, it is, it's, it's beyond deeply troubling. Because if you get that number of people that don't believe in the legitimacy of the election, where do we go from there? So I just hope it's going to be a sweeping victory. But I think even with a sweeping victory, you're still going to have people that doubt the outcome. But that's the mess we're in. And that's why I spoke at the convention. Right. Because the things like that cannot be tolerated. Yeah, I still don't hear what we're actually going to do. And, and it's more than just, I think, <clears throat> people who don't accept the election. It's that both sides use this word existential about if the other guy wins, America is over. When you have two camps like that who think that it's the end of the country, the end of our yeah. life as we know it, if the other side wins. Now, in what world is Joe Biden the end of America? I don't know. But that's where they are. Do you really think there's going to be a peaceful transition of power? Well, Bill, I would I don't want to speculate that things could go could go negative there. I, I don't want to do, I don't want to feed that. I, that'll have to be something you need to talk about. But I, I will tell you that that's another reason why I spoke, because the, the hatred through clenched teeth doesn't now exist just with politicians. It's now down in the families. It's, in the, it's, it's with neighbors. It's with friends. Uh, I mean, I have never seen a time, and, and it's been getting, they're getting, now it's been fed. You know, it's like putting gasoline on a fire where, you know, it used to be the politicians didn't like one another. But now when you have families being broken, People can't talk about this. This is what really troubles me. And it's so ridiculous because we're Americans. And right. I, it's that everybody's, they're in their own silos. It's tribal. And I wrote a book about this. In fact, we talked about it before. It's called, it, it's up to us. If you can't, you, you, you fix everything from the bottom up, not the top down. And when the public is divided, you can't get anything done. And that, I, I it's... I'm so upset about that because yeah. I see it every single day. Well, listen, I commend you for uh, speaking at this convention and endorsing Biden. I think that was a really great thing you did. And for those people who are hostile to you, you say you're getting a lot of heat. You know, I know that some, sometimes comes from the left. And I just want to say to those people, look, this country, you're always going to be sharing it with some people, a lot of people who just don't see the world the way you do. And you have to accept that. It seems like we're in this place where we want to own each other and obliterate each other. No one wants to yeah. compromise. And that's something that you and Joe Biden have in common. You're two guys who, no, you know, who accept yeah, that people right. have differences. You can't own them. You have to work with them. We have to coexist.